Hi everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel and I've got Copper and Sky here and today we thought we would do a video on how to fly your dog from the USA to the UK. So long time followers of Copper and Sky on Instagram will know that we moved to London from San Francisco in January 2019 and to do this there was a lot of paperwork involved and a lot of steps to go through and we have since been asked by about five or six different people how do we fly our dogs to the to the UK from the USA so I thought in this video today I'd actually touch upon that and kind of give you some of the steps that we took to get Sky and Copper to London from San Francisco. So initially when we started to do our research about moving back to London from the USA we contacted airlines to see could we fly with Copper and Sky in the cabin because obviously that would be the perfect scenario and give us peace of mind during the flight and it is such a long flight. They were both emotional support animals and we were hoping that we might be able to get them in the cabin with us but when we contacted the airlines we were informed that they would only qualify as assistance animals so that meant they had to have received training from a number of organizations and these include Canine Partners, Dogs for Good, Guide Dogs for the Blind Association, Hearing Dogs for Deaf People and Support Dogs and they didn't have that certification. The emotional support animal dog certification that we had was just from a company in the USA and it didn't meet Virgin Atlantic's requirements so after doing our research we found out that we're basically going to have to ship them in with the cargo. Now there was an alternative option that we could have explored but we decided pretty early on that we weren't going to do it just because of our personal circumstance and that was the potential to fly into Paris or into Amsterdam with our dogs in the cabin and then get the Eurostar over to London. However, we decided against this because we had so much luggage of, of our own stuff that we thought it was going to be quite a challenge if we were to land in Paris or Amsterdam with two dogs to look after and all our luggage and then get the Eurostar over to London. So the option we decided upon was to go with Virgin Atlantic and the dogs would have to go in cargo. So one thing you need to know at this point is that if you do intend on shipping your pets to London, then you'll need to contact your airline in advance of making your booking to make sure that there's room on the aircraft for your dogs. And then once you've done that, they will usually give you a quote depending on the size of the crate that is required. So the airline will have specific size requirements for this related to the size of your dog and you'll have to get a crate that matches those size requirements. So that brings me on to my second point and that is purchasing the crate that will hold your dog. So the kennel has to be IATA approved. So that's something to be aware of when you're buying your crate online. We bought our crates on Amazon and I will put in the link to the Amazon page in case you are looking for a airline suitable crate. And there are a number of things to bear in mind when you're buying this crate. And that is that the crate must be made of wood or hard plastic and be rigid on all sides. It should be non-collapsible and there should be no roof grill. It should be equipped with a suitable water dish and it should have a water dish that's able to be attached to the inside of the kennel. It should be ventilated on all four sides. The base must be leak proof and you have to put absorbent material in the bottom of the pet kennel. That's obviously in case they have to go potty while they're in the, um, while they're in the cargo section or either side of the waiting to be loaded up and waiting to be loaded off. There should be a lock-in mechanism on the door and make sure that the, the, the door is secure and that it has a pin that keeps the door in place and they have a minimum cage requirement size, which is 53 by 40 by 38 centimeters. Now, as I already mentioned, you it's probably good practice to get in touch with the airline before you make your own booking to make sure that the airline will have space for your dogs on the flight that you want to take. I know in our case, we definitely wanted the dogs to be on the same flight with us as us just to give us peace of mind that they're on the same plane. So you don't actually pay the airfare until you drop them off at the airport. So you can make the booking, reserve their place, but then you'll make the payment when you get there. So when we got to San Francisco airport, we went to the cargo section and that's where we made the payment. Now you'll need to bring a lot of documents and they have a pre-checked document that's on Virgin Atlantic's website and you can print that off and make sure that you have all the necessary things that are required for them to travel onto the pet travel scheme. And you will need to get that together 72 hours before your flight and then send it over to them. This just helps because Virgin Atlantic can then send it on to the animal reception center at Heathrow or the animal reception center that you're going to be landing in of that country. And they can go through the documents and it should speed up the process in theory. However, there is a catch. And in our situation, we were unable to submit the documents ahead of time. And that's because the UK has certain tape-borne requirements. I'll touch upon that a little bit later. 
Now, another thing that you need to think about, and this is step four, and it might go under the radar, and we had no idea that this was something that we needed to get in order, and that is a transfer of residence number. So you need to get a transfer of residence number to avoid paying VAT on your dogs when they arrive in the UK. So just like anything else, like a product that you might get shipped over to um, the UK from the USA, you are expected to pay VAT on that item. Especially, obviously, if it's a new item, if it's a gift, then you might not have to pay VAT. Now, for the dogs, obviously, we already bought them in the USA, so we didn't pay any tax that of VAT in the USA on the dogs. So we did get our transfer residence number, and that helped us so we didn't have to pay the VAT when we arrived in the UK. Now, things to be aware of is that on the website, the relevant website in the UK, HMRC's website, it says that giving your transfer residence number can take up to two weeks. So you might want to do this well in advance of booking your flight over to the UK. Now, in our case, it actually only took five days. And I do believe that if you do it after you, you have moved over, that you can um, get the transfer residence number and the VAT will be paid back to you if you have paid VAT upon their arrival. The documents that you need to get the transfer residence are a transfer of residence application form, a black and white copy of the photo page from my passport or your passport in this case, and a copy of the visa if it's been issued, a sign of goods that you wish to import, proof of residence, residency in a country that you're moving to, so you'll need a proof of address of the place that you're going to move to, and then evidence of your right and intention to move to the UK. So this could be a contract from an employer in the UK, a rental agreement in the UK. And like I said, if you're unable to get this transfer residence number prior to your flight, you can claim at the VAT back once you've received your number when you're living in the UK. Now, that's been a lot of paperwork so far, but the fifth step actually involves something that you probably would expect to have to do, and that's go to the vet. So once we booked our flights, we got in touch with our local vet who had previous experience with moving clients from the UK to the USA. So we thought that was going to be a good thing, but not necessarily because even though they had experience of it, they made a lot of sloppy mistakes in our situation. So they did help us go through the requirements of what needed to happen with Copper and Sky. So for Copper and Sky, we were, the vet told us that we had to meet five requirements in order for them to enter the UK. So the first one was to have an identification with a microchip, and that is something that we had from when we picked up the dogs from our breeder, Nordic Mini Husky. So that was already taken care of, but the vet will scan your dogs to make sure that the microchip is there if you already have it. The second thing is the rabies vaccination. So the UK has a the UK has a proud record of not having rabies in the country for a long, long time. I need to do more research on that. Pretty sure that is common knowledge. But there are a couple of rules to bear in mind, and that is that the first rabies vaccination after the microchip implantation is considered the primary vaccine against rabies, and it's, val it's valid for a year. Then, if it's been after 12 months, they will need to get a booster. But that will need to happen at least 21 days before you move to the UK. And it's important that you have the rabies vaccination number included. So when they give you the vaccination or the booster, there will be a number accredited to that vaccination or number. So in our case, they had already had the rabies vaccination, but they had to have it, the booster. So fortunately for us, we had done this well in advance of moving to the UK. So they weren't within the, it wasn't within the 21 days. So they were fine. They, they took the box in this one. You have to get an accredited veterinary issue EU health certificate, and this has to occur within 10 days of entry to the UK, into the EU or UK. So basically your vet, your American vet, has to give their dogs a, a check and just say, yes, there's a, everything's fine with them, there's no issues. And then the last thing is tapeworm treatment. So tapeworm treatment is required for dogs that are going to be imported to the UK. The dogs must be treated with the vaccine between 24 and 120 hours before entering the EU. So that's a key detail. So if it's after the 120 hours or before the 24 hours, you're gonna have a problem. So step six is the examination and tapeworm vaccination. So we went to our vet five days before we flew out to make sure that we were all within the necessary timelines. The vet did everything that she needed to do. Um, she did make a number of mistakes in the document, which we caught at the time, thankfully, all but one, which would later bite us in the ass in the UK and she stamped on every single page even though i don't know if that was necessary but we asked her to do it just to be safe and then on the same day we made our trip to sacramento to the usda aphis office and it usually takes between 30 and 60 minutes for them to go through the to go through the details of the document um, in our case it took three to four hours because there was a mistake that our veterinarian had made 
But after that wait, we actually got the documents and it was all good. Step eight is arriving at the airport. So you need to get to the airport at least four hours before you drop your dogs off. So you go to the cargo building rather than the actual airport in most cases. And the staff go through all your documents. They give you some extra paperwork to fill out. You have to pay the fare, which you had already reserved previously when you called up the airline earlier. Um, in our case, it cost, I think, off the top of my head, around $3,000 to transport both Copper and Sky to London from the USA. So that's what we had to pay when we arrived. Now, when you are getting on board the plane or when you are going through um, the final checks as you're boarding the plane, we made aware to the air attendants that we had dogs on board and we did this because we had read a couple of stories that the pilots need to set the air temperature to a certain temperature to make sure the dogs are comfortable. And in some cases, pilots haven't done it and it could result in potential harm to the dogs. So we just, to be safe, make sure that we set it as they were checking our passports as we were about to board the plane. And then when we were on the plane and settled and before the plane took off, we also set it again to one of the stewardesses. And she actually said the pilots had seen the dogs being loaded up and was wondering what type of dogs they were. So that was quite funny. So then step nine was landing in the UK. The flight was 11 hours. We had read some horror stories about people being able to hear a dog screaming and barking during the flight. But thankfully we didn't hear anything from Copper and Sky. So we were really worried about the potential impact that would have on them. But we didn't hear any noise during the flight. And once we made it to London Heathrow, we got through our own customs and we went straight to the animal reception center to pick them up. Now, if you go on Netflix, you can actually find um, a whole series called Animal I think it's called Animal Airport, um, or else you can Google it, but I think that's the name. And basically, it's all about the Heathrow Animal Reception Center. So we actually watched this series, or I think there was two series before we flew out, to just do a bit of research and see how things operate there. And it was actually really interesting, so I'd recommend watching it if you have some spare time. It's not just pets that go through. You get a lot of, they get a lot of wild animals that are headed to different zoos or people who have licenses to hold certain wild animals. So it was quite interesting. So we kind of had an idea of where the place was and what to expect when we got there. When we first arrived, we thought it would take between two and four hours. That's what they usually say if you arrive from outside the EU. If you're arriving within the EU, it's quicker. Um, when we arrived, they told us initially that it would only be an hour, but there was a, there was an issue with the paperwork and obviously with the time difference uh, going back to the USA, it took them a while to get in contact with our vet and our vet had made a mistake. She hadn't put Copper's rabies vaccination number in the document and that was the hold up. So we actually ended up waiting about four or five hours in the end before we finally were giving our dogs back. And Copper and Sky did go a bit crazy, barking and lots of noise. But I have to say, after all that, there has been no real damage to their mental health or well-being. Yes, they still have separation anxiety a little bit, but it's no more or no less than when we left the USA. Now, if you don't have all the documents in order or there is something wrong, you are facing potential quarantine. So I think in the start of January 2016, the UK changed their laws and there was no longer a quarantine period if you were bringing your dogs from outside the EU into the UK, as long as all your documents and all the vaccinations were in order. However, if there is a mistake or there is something wrong, and if you watch Animal Airport on Netflix, you will see this happen quite a few times, they will quarantine your animal, and I think it's usually for 21 days. Um, fortunately, that did not happen in Copper and Sky situation because we were able to get in contact with the vet and they were able to supply the vaccination number that, they, that was missing from the documents. But that's just something to be aware of. Now, I know that's a lot of information to hear in a YouTube video, so I will put the link to my article on my dog website, hellobark.com, so you can actually check it out there and maybe it might be easier to kind of go through it with um, writing in front of you rather than just hearing it from my voice. They have adapted to the UK life. We've been here a year now. They absolutely love it. It's more exciting that the, than they're shown in the video right now. As you can see, they are absolutely conked. Um, again, like I said, if if you can get your dogs in the cabin and you are able to fly to one of the other cities that I mentioned to get the Eurostar over to London, then great. That is definitely a better option than having to put your dogs in cargo. But if you do have to put your dogs in cargo and you're not able to get them in the cabin, and I should say that the, U the UK do not recognize emotional support animals. Now in that episode, there is an episode on Animal Airport where someone does bring her dog over from the USA on the, e on the emotional support animal documentation. And the way it's depicted in the episode, she got very fortunate that her dog was not quarantined for 21 days or even longer because she wasn't supposed to do it. I can't quite remember how she got out of it, but 
in my just based on our experience i wouldn't recommend risking it um because it does seem like quite a hefty price to pay if you go if you don't get away with it and also they didn't really suffer any long-term trauma yes they were very upset when we picked them up but they've been themselves ever since and i don't know if we would ever do it again we do feel like it was unfair to put them in cargo for such a long long trip but at the same time there hasn't been any damage to them they are happy happy dogs and you know it's not the end of the world if you have to do it your dog will survive it's, it's remarkable how resilient they are and we were told by virgin atlantic that other dogs are sometimes in the cargo section with them so they're not always going to be by themselves in our case they were i think all they had was fish in there with them but other dogs might be in there cats other pets so yeah that is basically all the steps that you need to think about when you are planning to move your dogs or cats to the uk from the usa now if you have any questions or comments then leave them in the comment section below and if you want any more advice or information then feel free to message us on instagram we're life with Klikai, or you can email us life with Klikai at gmail.com and i can give you any help i can or put you in touch with people that helped us but for now that is where i'm going to end the video um sky and copper are asleep i think it's time for us to maybe do something to get them a bit more active but thanks for watching this video we'll be back soon with another video and have a great day guys and thanks for tuning in and please do subscribe to our youtube channel if you haven't already cheers guys